This is uh, in the front is an elk loin, one that I killed last year, 2013. In the back is a round uh, cut in two and just got through grilling them. They reached about 140 degrees inside, so that's the way I like them. Some of the guys may want to cook them a little more once we get them out there. So that is our Friday night meal once we everybody gets out. And there'll be some left over, I'm sure, so we'll use it uh, in one of the other meals. Getting ready to go to uh, Colorado to elk hunt. Well, we are getting ready to enter Denver. Downtown Denver. Real soon here. Jim's taking the back seat. I'm gonna get him a little nap if Bob's driving doesn't make him too nervous. <laughs> and Bob is now to wheel. Bob, how's the trip been for you? Have you slept a lot? I have. All right, Bob been sleeping a lot. Is that drugs? And we are just outside of Denver. Yeah. I suppose we'll have to pat, pat, pat down for drugs when he gets up on the hill, right? <laughs> I think so. Might as well pick on him a little bit. Just came through the Eisenhower Tunnel. We've got uh, snow along the side of the road. All around through us. Uh, they got a, quite a bit of snow out here. Several days ago, it snowed, and a lot of us melted. Uh, 7.45. It is Thursday morning, and I drove out to make a phone call. Forgot some things. To have uh, Mark and Daryl stop and get us some paper plates. I didn't bring those. That's a uh, mountain range over probably in Utah, about 30-something miles away. I'm uh, down below in the valley. That's where we're going to be hunting. But just beautiful, beautiful scenery this morning. All right, big guy. Tell me what's going on. i tell you what, man. This is Elk Palooza. Three years in a row, and uh, every year we've recorded on this stretch of 270. We just pulled out 8.40 p.m. October 15th. We had been planning all along to leave tomorrow morning uh, and then drive all day, all night, and arrive at camp the following morning, but I just got that itch today at work, and I said, Pat, how early can you get up here from Virginia? And he told me he could be here by 8 o'clock. I said, let's just leave, because I don't think I can sleep tonight anyways. So we're gonna kill ourselves and drive straight through. And if everything goes according to plan, I think we'll be to Grand Junction by about 5.30, give or take. Uh, maybe 4.30, 4.30, 5.30, and then another hour, hour and a half. How long does it take to get there from? I'd say it's an hour and 15 to an hour and a half. Hour and a half probably to get to camp and get there right before dark and get set up and uh, be ready to go. So Herman and the guys are already there, and then Daryl and uh, Mark are in transit from Florida. So we're looking forward to it. Very, very excited about this hunt. Nice. All right. Here we go. Woohoo! Bye, bye Columbus. <laughs> Tell me how it's going, buddy. Good morning. It's, uh... 8.36 a.m. I made it through all night. Uh, 
it was it wasn't too bad last night. We uh, we managed to take turns and drive, you know. But this is pretty much what Pat did all night. So it was kind of a rough <laughs> night for me, you know. But I managed. So it's a beautiful, beautiful morning. We've seen some deer. Daryl and Mark are about seven hours ahead of us. So should be real smooth sailing today. The weather looks good. Uh, I think it's supposed to be about 70 degrees down here, but it'll be quite a bit cooler up on the plateau. So I've done all the talking so far. I need to get you next time you drive. So we're in the middle of the windmills. It's it's it's, it's middle Kansas. It's hard it's hard to talk when I'm sleeping all the time. <laughs> so zoom in on some of these windmills. Trig loves these windmills. I'm glad we're actually coming through in the daylight for a change. So uh, it's, instead of being uh, always in the dark, looking at the red beacons on top of them. Pat was involved in a little road rage last night, but managed to <laughs> managed to survive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So hopefully I'm on the camera here, but yeah, some guys in a Porsche SUV wanted to tackle with this going down the interstate and just it was a very uneasy feeling for 40 miles or so with these guys so uh, finally they got off and we've never seen them again and that's that's best all right over and out later all right we're in Denver Colorado it's uh, 12 53 p.m. and we are coming up on the, the mountains, you can see the snow-capped mountains through the bugs on the windshield, hopefully. <laughs> Our pilot right now, Mr. Wiley. How's it going, buddy? We are, we are getting there. We Talk are getting there. Little, talk to me a little bit. So, uh, like you said, 12.53 local time, 2.53 for us back on the East Coast. But uh, we are, I don't even know how many hours into this now. What do we leave it? 8.40 p.m. Yep. So, so I'm 24 hours on the road at this point. I uh, left at 12.15 yesterday. Yeah. Or I'm sorry, 2.15. Um, but yeah, so we've been on the road a while. Ready to be there. <laughs> Re <laughs> ready to get the tent up, good night's sleep, go look at some elk, and then get on them. And Bob, this is for you. You better bust one. We've been talking about you the whole trip out here and how you got the bull tag. We want you to bust one, dude. Who's the other guy we want to bust one? Me? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not me? No. Daryl? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jim. There you go. Jim. <laughs> Anything else, man? Uh, I want you to bust one too. Okay, thanks. So but you gotta carry it out this year. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right. right. Here we go. Where are we at, man? We are turning onto the divide road. Five 48 so uh, a little bit later than we wanted but couldn't be helped because of some construction but yeah I think there's a divide road sundowns at 630 it's 548 so we're just trying our best to get up there before it gets dark absolutely all right buddy where are we at we are like one mile from camp. Yeah. So, and it is getting dark. So we are hurrying to get the tent put up. There's where our fake elk were last year. Yeah, you're right. Yep. And uh, how was that trip down the divide road? Uh, man, if we could have made a little better time. <laughs> 80 miles an hour is as fast as I could hit on the divide road, so. And he ain't lying. <laughs> We we, we we passed everybody we came up to, whether they wanted us to or not. <laughs> we, we did. We went around them quick. That's the quickest I've ever gone down that road. All right. Over and out. We'll talk to you tomorrow. See ya. Here's our first bull. Trig spotted this bad boy. The bugs. The bugs flying in front of it. It's catching them. Back at them more. Here's our first bull. He's hard to see. But he's 400 plus yards. Okay, it's the same morning as when we saw that uh, that bull. Uh, we're on the, I guess it would be the kind of the west side of 
deep canyon looking over at UC. You can tell it's UC from the rock outcropping there. And then if I pan down, you can see the, uh, the trail down in the bottom of the canyon. See the trail down there? That's where we'll be walking <laughs> long ways down. Let's see how far it is. Twelve hundred and eight yards. To that trail, twelve hundred and eight yards. Really nice bull opening morning. I'm between Willow Creek and you see he's at least a five by five. I'm hoping there's some cows in the area. I'm judging him about 250 yards. That's the same ball. Tell me what you saw this morning, buddy. saw a nice bull. <laughs> four by five. I think it was a four by five, maybe a five by five. I'm not sure, but he was nice. 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 And then, this is day one. It's uh, 1230. We went all the way back to Garvey. And I'll have to let you tell us what you saw back there. Uh, huh. And we're on our way back out of the canyon. And uh, probably head back up to camp and then figure out where we're going to go tonight. Hand that to me. <laughs> help, Mom. Help. Help. <laughs> what did you see today? Day one. Day Garvey, we busted out a couple of cow elk and sent them up the side of the mountain. But they they just so covered up in the scrub oaks, you just can't see them. Just can't. You get a glimpse and then they're gone. And glimpse again and they're gone. Just no way to get a shot. But uh, this is only day one. But you can tell uh, day one's going to hurt tonight. My yeah. legs are going to feel it. Yep. That's a long walk to park <laughs> in the back. Got that, <laughs> man. <laughs> Well, nice cow, not as big as the past ones that I've gotten. But she came along about 15 minutes after daylight. There were some other elk. My shot was as close as I've ever shot, 35 yards. I saw her coming and in Aspens. I never could get a good shot when she was away from me, so she just kept on coming to me. She stopped behind a tree. I actually had to walk over couple of steps to shoot her. One shot and then I walked up she to make her die quicker I shot her in the head. But uh, nice cow, nice fat cow. Happy to get her because yesterday saw elk but uh, didn't get a shot at any. And today right off the bat I heard elk coming through the woods and some split off went another way and this one happened to come right down by me so I'm gonna start field dressing her can't get a hold of any of my guys with the radio because I'm over a hill from them so 
Happy to get her. Happy to get her. Here's the elk. And she came running right through all this stuff. And she stopped right here in some logs. There's a log down on the ground there. I shot her, she just dropped immediately. Uh, then I didn't even see her after I shot. Pretty tall stuff, these bushes and things. But this is what I'm, I'm hunting in, these aspens. And uh, they start going way down the hill there, that's a deep ravine. And way down through there, I saw elk going across. And I thought, oh, I should have been down further. And then I looked to my left, and here came this one. I could hear her first before I could, uh, could see her. So happy to get her. Happy to get her because this will be my last cow elk hunt. Maybe. I don't know. I may hunt one more time. You never know at my age. But this is the, this is the territory that she was, was in. I left Mark and uh, Daryl Ashby back up over the hill from me. Mark heard a elk bugling. We all heard it bugling. I said I'd go after it. Probably some cows with it. I hit her right where I wanted to hit her. Right there in the uh, shoulder blade. You can see the hole. See if I can point it out. Right there's the hole. That's where I wanted to hit her. When you hit them there, they go down immediately. I'm field dressing her. Got one bag I'm filling up there. That's one of my other game bags. Let me just pan around here. I've already got one finished and those trees that have fallen over. I've got it up on there. So I'm gonna have to take my stuff out and then I'm gonna have to come back. We're gonna have to pack it out. Hope the bears don't get it while the bears are coyote while we're got it out here. I'm gonna try to get it out today. I'm getting a video of Daryl Ashby. He's the one that's got the gray cap and Jim Ward the orange cap and they were kind enough to come over and help me bone out and they're bagging it up. Now Daryl yes, say, say a little something for the camera. What you what you think of this elk hunting? This is what it's about right here. <laughs> sure is. Daryl's now going to tell you about the trip he took yesterday. He, that was a trip of a lifetime for him. Uh, all right, we're going to put these up, and I'm going to take my stuff back to the truck, go get my pack frame, and start packing some of this out. This is my meat. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bags. I uh, got it all hauled out pretty quickly. Uh, everybody helped except uh, Pat and Trigg, and they weren't there. Everybody else jumped, pitched right in and helped. Jim Ward was a great help to me. Uh, he's a good fella to go hunting with. I just hope he gets him an elk. Well, it's Monday morning, and me and Herman are walking out to uh, retrieve the cow elk I shot last night at about 540 so I'm hoping that the bears looky here I'm hoping that the bears didn't eat it up look what we just ran across just ran across a bull here somebody Killed this one yesterday. Wow. Would you say the bear got into that? I'd say the bear got Is into that. Is that what that looks like? Yeah. Yeah, bear. So I'm hoping this isn't the case with mine. It's a, it's a three, really a three by three. 
So this is where I was sitting. You can see I stacked up a couple rocks here. I was sitting right here on those rocks, looking down into this little valley over here. See a little valley. Not a lot of shooting lanes, but some. And then I had about a 150 yard shot through that opening and then about 170 yards out through that opening. And then I had some more over here near the Aspens. But uh, I started hearing some uh, a bull banging his antlers over in this direction there. So, and then I started hearing some cows mewing. So I started walking down up against these pine trees and I, I got up probably 20 yards from here and they were starting to move across in front of me. So I started moving ahead and I'll go ahead and walk on forward. So I closed quite a bit of distance and uh, got up into here and then I sat down in these scrubby oaks and this little opening here I scooted on my bottom through this opening right here. Scooted all the way through here over to this opening here and by now I was starting to see some elk moving across but it was still too thick so I I moved on ahead even further so this is a tree I came up behind and I set my bipod down and I sat down right here and that opening right through there is where I I got my shot and the elk just went both directions. There was about 10 cows and one one nice bull. And they scattered both to the right and to the left. And my elk ran about 20 yards this way into an opening. And she should be hopefully up there laying right now untouched. So I'm standing at the spot probably roughly where she was hit. And I can see her laying up there on the other side of that tree. Man, look at the elk track. Oh, I'm telling you, there was a ton of them in that herd. All kinds of elk, elk tracks. That's a fresh one there. Probably, that was probably some of those that you shot. Was that out of that group you shot? So here we are. Looks like the bears got into her guts. Uh, hopefully, We'll be able to salvage. Oh yeah, they didn't. They didn't injure anything. They might have done us a favor, even. Makes it easier to handle. This is the cow that Trig shot last night. And you can see the bears gutted her for us during the night. Uh, so we're going to try to drag her out of that mess. I don't know, we ought to be able to go ahead and maybe cut the guts out. But a nice cow, nice cow. So that was our second one to kill. And what'd you just do? Well, we just boned out a cow elk that Trig killed that the bears were nice enough to come in and gut for us. <laughs> but the only thing, they made a mess out of it. So that's the messiest job I've ever done as far as field dressing. Oh, well, Trig got quite a bit of good meat. They, uh, what they ruined was part of the ham, some of the good, uh, the good rounds that would have made good steaks. But he got a, two nice back straps, two tenderloins. They didn't ruin those, which I'm surprised. But uh, we got it all finished. I just told him it was a relief to get all this up here. <laughs> well, thanks for your help.
Here's something you don't see very often. Guys are packing out a bull elk that this guy's wife shot with a 30 out 6 yesterday morning. And uh, they've been way back in there to get it. So uh, I'll be anxious to see him go by. Little muley. He's standing, oh, maybe 18 yards or so from me. Eh. 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 Standing on the western slope. Beautiful, beautiful view. My. Way down there. There's a road that winds and twists around this. And the road goes way on out there. Way through there are the LaSalle Mountains. That's part of the LaSalle range. All right, so you can see those tops of those yellow aspens. We had elk, after flying rhino shot at them, come through. And I'm going to back out here and just give you an idea. They came around the side of this mountain from over in this draw, which is where we first saw them, somewhere up in here. They came all the way through and around, and when they got to this tree down here, right over top of these pine trees and this yellow aspen you can see on the right of the screen, um, we decided I'd take a shot, and that was 610 yards, and I'll back it out and give you an idea of how far a miss that is. And here we set. So you can see 610 yards, but I, it appears I shot over. And then when we were sitting here, Trig saw him There's come back. There's more coming Whoop. out. Hang on. They just came out. They're right. See him? Uh-uh. Hang on. Let me point to him. I can't find him, dude. Here. Look. I'm right at him. I got him. Okay, let me back up. I got him. Let me back up. Oh, I don't want him. She's going to come out right there. Dropped it. Dropped it. Did it get back up? I think so. It's okay, it's down again. See it rolling? Yeah. 
Elk down, baby. Just keep on it. I can't, I can't find it. Okay, don't. It's it's not moving. Okay, it's starting to roll down again. See it rolling? I don't see it. Elk down. Elk down. 400 yards. It's still rolling. See it rolling? Yes. Naked eye. Naked eye. You want me to put another one in her? I can. She's yeah. Dead. You want me to put one in her? Uh. I would. I can see her breathing, but boy, she's blue. I blew out the other side. Well, do you want to just stay on her? Yeah, I'm going to stay on her. Congratulations, buddy. Oh, thank you. Oh, I hit her back. I hit her back about halfway. It's down. Uh, you need to start walking, uh, uh, start walking uh, parallel to the uh, trail, just sideways across the mountain. She's halfway. Huh? She's almost halfway up. Probably halfway up the side of the mountain. Tell him she's three, 200, 200 yards out of the... Back towards They you. ran back towards you. The other ones ran back towards you, so be on the lookout. Heck of a shot, Pat. She's dead. She's dead. Turn around and look at me. Nope, she's breathing. She's breathing. Is she? Are you a happy camper? <laughs> Whew, thanks to my buddy here. <laughs> I just, found him. We just... We, we interrupted our last broadcast to bring you this broadcast. We saw elk, we ran a half mile, and we just dropped one. <laughs> yeah, I can see a boy did I blow a hole in her trig. You will not believe this hole. I blew out her entire side. Wow. Look at me, buddy. Once again, my buddy comes through. Go ahead. That was intense. That was so intense. Uh, we, we ran probably for five to ten minutes chasing these guys down and uh, he probably killed this one I'm gonna say 45 minutes after he shot at the other one down there at 600 yards this was a about a 406 yard shot uh, just beautiful uh, Jim uh, went up the ravine that we saw them run into and started walking up the ravine and he must have pushed him out and I saw him coming across and then Pat was able to find him uh, soon after that and we were able to range it and uh, when they came back out in the opening he put a beautiful shot on it and it tumbled down a little bit I don't know if the video will show that or not but it rolled just a little bit down but just one shot's all it took awesome shot buddy thank you if the, and, and Jim, I know you can't see my face right now, but I'm smiling from ear to ear because I thank you, buddy, for what you just did. You pushed him out of there. Hey, Pat, tell us about it. Ooh, what a morning. I'm going I'm to give you the condensed version. So we walked in on the, uh, on the west side, I guess, and had elk. Um, after Mark started shooting at him, way down at the uh, uh, draw. Pause and tell me how many times Mark shot. Um, four. <laughs> Four. 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 I, I, all I know is he ran out of ammo. That's all I know. <laughs> so uh, we saw him all over the mountainside looking for, for his, but in the meantime, seven of them came back across and got into Willow Creek, and we decided to try it 610 yards at Willow Creek, and I overshot her. And we, sh we, we waited till the last second before they went to timber, so uh, there was no follow-up shot. Then we saw elk coming out again. Trig spotted them up on the very point of Willow Creek and they started making their way on around here and, and coming back towards this draw where we shot them our, two years ago and Trig and I just packed up and started hoofing it and we ran for I'm guessing fast walk run for 10 minutes and by the time we got back to this rock over here we I was spent and Jim and Mark came up and cut up that draw and uh, they they went a good little ways up the draw, and all of a sudden Trig goes, hey, there they are. They're coming out. 
and they were three of them making their way along this hillside and she was in the lead and I said as soon as she stops in an opening we're gonna take her and 406 yards is what we ranged her and we let the 338 Lapua do the rest here she is congratulations beautiful shot beautiful shot Mark how many did you see this morning I saw a whole herd about 20 of them I guess coming up from UC to Willow Creek and I emptied my gun. <laughs> hey, I actually shot and I thought I hit one. She dropped. She like she went down and then she got back up and I unloaded my clip trying to hit her again and she went. Do you do yeah. you think you hit her? I she like she was standing there and then she dropped down. She didn't fall, she like kinda of went down and then she jumped back up and and uh, took off again. Jim, did you see any this morning? No, I heard them. I yeah. never seen them. Craig, how many did you think you saw? Same amount. As Pat? Pat? Yeah. All right. All right. Great job. We've got three down now. So we're going to start uh, butchering this one.